Today we're going to talk about some sensitive topics that may not be suitable for younger viewers, and I got a little worked up in the middle and said some curse words, just so you know. My channel's supposed to be funny and entertaining, how do I review this movie? Last week I saw Sound of Freedom, and I hated it. It was super heavy, ruined my entire evening, had to take a shower when I got home and a pill to get to sleep, cried a whole lot, my kids are never allowed outside again, terrible experience all the way around. Uh, 10 out of 10, you should see this movie. Alright, so how do we do this? Let's, uh, let's talk about the movie a little bit, also the idiocy surrounding it, but also I want to talk about your response so that way we don't just tell each other how important this movie is and then go back to life as usual first let's observe the insane response to a movie whose message is child trafficking is bad let's take a look at the front runner for the crazy race miles clee writing for rolling stone i read this article I don't even know that we saw the same movie. We jump in right with the sensational headline. It's a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. The QAnon-tinged thriller about child trafficking is designed to appeal to the conscience of a conspiracy-addled boomer. Wow, okay. So much to unpack there, but you'll notice the movie is QAnon tinged. All through the article, Miles is trying desperately to link this movie to QAnon, which admittedly I don't know a lot about, but based on the headlines, it seems like it's something that super leftists use to describe thing they don't like. You know, like fascist or something phobe. That doesn't mean anything. Those are just words. So the movie and the people involved are Q adjacent, or they are linked to other people who spout Q theories. The article just keeps talking about the movie and then QAnon, and hopes that by talking about them and putting them right next to each other in the same article that they actually will be linked. She's engaged. Make everything about that. What kind of dress is she gonna wear? Floggings. What's the cake gonna look like? Executions. Who's gonna be there? Fear. The film casts Ballard as a Batman-style savior for kids sold into the sex trade. Okay, uh, no, no, the movie contains no such Batman action. As a matter of fact, most of the movie is about how Ballard is basically helpless without the help of a former criminal, a billionaire, the U.S. government, the government of the countries that he's working in. Miles then tells us basically everything about the real life Ballard is fake, and people like him are fomenting moral panic over the grossly exaggerated epidemic of child sex trafficking. This is why you need to be very careful about attacking every single little thing about your supposed political enemies. In his crazy attempt to discredit Ballard and Caviezel, this man is trying to downplay the severity of child sex trafficking. But while we're talking about epidemics, 350,000 kids get reported missing in the United States every single year, and it's estimated that 100,000 of those are trafficked every year year. Just for perspective, let's look at the recent COVID epidemic. Now there's a lot of controversy surrounding data collection methods and what are excess deaths, but for simplicity, let's just go with what the CDC reported. For the three years of 2020, 21, and 22, the CDC reported a total of right at 1 million deaths in the United States. That is an average of 350,000 per year. That is a lot of people. I purposely stopped my count at the end of 22, so that average is higher. If we even take the first half of this year into account, the average starts dropping off drastically. We shut the entire fucking country down for COVID, upended everyone's lives. We'll be feeling the effects for a decade or more, but Miles wants us to believe that the number of kids sold into trafficking every single year is exaggerated so he can downplay it to make Jim Caviezel look bad. Do you know what kind of evil piece of shit you have to be to do that just so you can poke at your political enemy? <clears throat> Almost 30 million people worldwide are living in slavery as a result of human trafficking. Over 5 million of them are children. Miles could have just said, I think this movie's garbage, and left it at that. But this piece of garbage is trying to sweep human trafficking under the rug amazing. You know what? Again, though, I don't even know that we were watching the same movie. He said it fetishizes the torture of its child victims and lingers over lush preludes to their abuse. That's right. When in doubt, cast guilt on the filmmakers and the audience. You motherfucker. This movie has three preludes to abuse. The first is grainy footage of a kid sitting on the edge of a bed and an adult is walking toward them. It lasts about two seconds, then we cut to Ballard's face because the scene is about having him having to watch the scene and then type a transcript out. The second time is the girl he is actually looking for. Again, in a cheap sex hotel, she's sitting on the edge of the bed and a drunk American guy stumbles in 
He grabs her face to look at her. Then he goes over to the window. We get a shot from outside the building where he closes the curtains and then we hang onto those closed curtains for a few more seconds. Finally, when Ballard is saving the girl from the jungle, the guy who purchased her picks her up from one bed, takes her to another bed, and he starts undoing his belt and then Ballard attacks him. I don't know what lush preludes we're talking about. Then Miles just tries to say the movie doesn't make any sense, doesn't have any procedural logic. Ballard is only able to rescue the first boy because he just happens to be at the border at the right time. You stupid fuck, the scene beforehand shows him tricking someone into getting a child brought in across the border. He knew that kid was coming and was standing there with the picture. All the other the border agents are on alert. They're obviously looking and waiting for that kid. That same pervert guy is the subject of Miles' next bit of confusion. Why was he arrested twice? He thinks that it's just some shock value so we can see some perv get slammed into a table twice. He was arrested twice because Ballard tricked him into actually setting up the sale of a child. He was arrested the first time for having pictures and video, then he was arrested again for actual human trafficking. They're different crimes, so he was arrested again, you fucking moron. And the reason that he was out on bail is because Ballard allowed him to be released talking to his boss. There was an entire seen about it so he could do the sting to have him contact someone and send a kid where were you when this was happening or are you just willfully ignorant like it's fine that you just wanted to hate the movie and that would come across in a review but you're just making shit up at this point he's also upset about the movie's white savior complex what kind of do you understand how chronically online you have to be to put race equality over child trafficking. Seriously, you went to a movie that was about kid trafficking, there's a huge diverse cast, but the main character is white, and that you're like, oh my god, white guy again. I'm so sorry that the real life Tim Ballard is a white guy. Oh, he's also Mormon, which Miles took a minute to note. Just like the Sanderson article from a few months ago, the, the press has a serious thing with Mormons that I do not understand. What's so stupid is that by going out of his way to besmirch the character of Ballard and Caviezel, he has missed actual valid criticism of the movie. For example, the entire end portion of the movie was unnecessary and not even true. The whole movie is about Ballard working with various people and sleazy folks to try to trick them into gathering a bunch of kids and bringing them to an island where they think is going to be a private sex club. They're going to sell these kids and it's actually a sting. They arrest all the people and rescue all the kids. The island bit was very true. It was only one piece of an operation called Triple Take. They actually had three simultaneous missions and they rescued 120 people that day. Day, not all of whom were kids. They cut the other two parts of the mission for time, which I found weird because they added this part at the end where Ballard and Vampiro sneak into the jungle posing as doctors and they rescue that one girl. Ballard kills the guy who bought her, which the real life Ballard says that never happened. Then he grabs her, they run out of the camp and leave the rest of the slaves behind. The island bust was a great place to end it. It was the culmination of everything we had seen. It wrapped up all the points. They should have stopped right there. They claim they cut a bunch of stuff from the real story because they didn't have time, but they made time to add this fourth act to a three act story for this stuff that's not even real. Terry, why? Now, I had heard that this was a crazy right wing movie riddled with conspiracies, so I was on the lookout. I don't know what the hell these people are seeing. There were no depictions of left-wing people or policies. There wasn't like a George Soros look-alike. They did stop a guy at the border to rescue that one kid, and that would have been such a good place to have the Ballard character be like, you know what, a wall or extra border security would have stopped this traffic. None of that was even in there. The bad people are all varied looking. There are no political affiliations mentioned. No world leaders are referenced. As a matter of fact, they smartly cut Glenn Beck's appearance, he was supposed to be in the beginning of the movie, apparently he actually funded the real-life Ballard's activities a decade ago. The only political angle at all was Ballard quitting his job at Homeland Security because bureaucracy was getting in the way of him saving these kids. If this had been a ham-fisted attack on progressive politics, I would be rolling my eyes just like I do with every other type of hack political writing. But trying to read into this stuff just because Caviezel's involved is so stupid and makes you look like an idiot. Again, remember this when you're making your own arguments. Don't make stuff up just because you don't like somebody. It backfires. I briefly looked it up. Apparently QAnon is this idea that there's this uh, the, the leaders of the world, the elites, run this child sex trafficking ring and that they 
harvest their blood or something called adrenochrome from their brains or something before they kill them. The occult rituals, the blood sealing or whatever, that is unproven as far as I can tell, but the trafficking is very real. Rich and powerful people absolutely do buy children as sex slaves. Like Jeffrey Epstein and all the people that visited his island are real and you won't find a single person who will tell you with a straight face that man killed himself. So since human trafficking overlaps a little bit with this QAnon thing which also has this occult stuff, now hack authors like Miles think they can dismiss human trafficking just because it's they, they call it a QAnon conspiracy? It's a provable fact, it happens! Further, the term conspiracy theorist is not the sick burn that these idiots think it is, especially when historically a ton of these conspiracies are straight up true with evidence. Operation Northwoods was an actual false flag plan that the CIA came up with to justify a war with Cuba in 1962. Operation Sea Spray was a real thing. The Navy actually sprayed bacteria over the San Francisco Bay Area to see how a bio attack might play out. Operation Mockingbird, MK Ultra, those are real programs that actually existed for years. The documents are out, they're declassified, there's evidence. You don't even have to look on a conspiracy website. This crap is on Wikipedia. Now whistleblowers are saying aliens are real. The government really did inject black people with syphilis and then watch them for 40 years. It was called the Tuskegee experiment. So conspiracy theorists, it's not an insult. I genuinely don't know how anyone trusts the government at this point, especially black people, which is why critical race theory cracks me up. They're like, hey, look at all this racist stuff the government has done to black people. It's inherently racist. It's so bad. And I'm like, I totally follow you. So you probably want to take away all their power. We want to reduce the size of the government. That way they can't ever do that stuff again, right? CRT people are like, no, no, no. We actually want to give the government more power and departments and layers of bureaucracy, but, but we're going to make them promise not to do racist stuff anymore. I'm sorry, are we gentle parenting the government right now? Hey, let's talk. I just want to talk to you. I want to get your permission to talk to you. What did we talk about? Human rights violations. We said that was a bad choice. Remember we talked about choices? Human rights violations are a bad choice and we're gonna make good choices going forward, right? Uncle Sam, isn't that right? Okay, here's a treat, now you go play. Do not let this happen for an 80 second time. Do you understand me? This is why when people say, the government has to do something, I can't, I can't even talk to you about that. So about the movie, I was very surprised with how good the cinematography was. Like, I don't know what I was expecting exactly story or, or visual wise, but I really like what we got. This is definitely not taken or like an action flick where the camera is bouncing around and we're smash cutting back and forth. I'm not expert enough to articulate this properly i don't know the the technical terms i just know that in several points in this movie i thought hmm that camera angle or that lighting that's really interesting apparently the budget on this one was just shy of 15 million dollars it looks like it cost five times that as far as acting goes jim caviezel showed up to freaking work in every scene I didn't know a lot about this guy. I had to look up, like, what has he been in? I never did watch Person of Interest. I didn't see Passion of the Christ. I don't think that I have ever seen this guy on screen before, but it takes a lot of talent to portray passion without, like, scowling or screaming or whatever. He really deserves a lot of props for really embodying the idea of quiet intensity. I also enjoyed his later partner, Vampiro, played by Bill Camp. He really nailed this, uh, this character that is trying to do good in a broken world and also deal with his own sins and he's a little bit cracked because of it i mean he had like this crazy grin like he was courting death in the entire movie i really enjoy when movies explore this idea that morality is very black and white and then you have to deal with people and what are you willing to do what are you willing to put up with in order to achieve a different goal both characters have to deal with the most slimy disgusting human garbage you could imagine but they have to put up with it in order to get to this greater good hopefully at a later time and obviously this movie is highly emotional there's not a lot of like story or character development like we might discuss with a fictional story this is a retelling of events and it was very well paced except for that jungle bit i honestly can't tell you if this would have hit the same if they were tracking down like drug dealers or something the subject matter is highly emotional it, there's no way around it so it's hard to be honest and say if this movie delivered the emotional beats or if they delivered themselves either way 
It was Tear City. The kids get taken. I'm crying. Miguel gets reunited with his dad. Weeping. Tim explains the importance of the mission to the rich guy. Tears. The rescued kids being happy. Sobbing. The rescued kids being blank faced and a little dead inside. Crying. It was a heavy movie. It seriously had me feeling down for the rest of the night. Not even popcorn for dinner could help. So I do think you should go see this, not just for the message, but because it is a well done and interesting movie. But it should spur you to action. One thing that worries me is that this might might end up being just another important movie. I hate important movies because they usually don't mean anything. At the end of the movie, Caviezel gives this message, says you can pay it forward and buy tickets for other people so that way we can spread the message, we can raise awareness. I hate raising awareness. After you're aware, then what? This movie just drops this information in your lap that people are living in slavery around the world, now you gotta carry that around? No, you don't. Despite the film opening with a montage of kids getting snatched right off the street and a father getting tricked out of his kids, that's usually not how it goes down. The kids that end up in traffic are exactly who you would expect. Kids with no infrastructure, kids who barely receive any care or attention, kids in the foster system, kids in poverty, kids with no one who cares. They run away or get manipulated into slavery because there's no one around to stop them or look for them. They are the targets because no one is gonna come try to find them. So don't just pay it forward by buying movie tickets. Get your license to foster or adopt even if it's just to provide respite care for full-time families. Get involved with organizations like Big Brothers Big Sisters. Get involved with organizations that provide support to foster and adoptive families. Get involved with organizations like Safe Families for Children and provide support for whole families as a unit. When these kids have a support system and they have people in their lives that give even half a damn, they are exponentially less likely to be trafficked or engage in any of the behaviors that are gonna ruin their lives. The other thing you can do to help kids today Stop watching porn. Apart from the kids, it's just bad for you. Like from a purely selfish perspective, you're hurting yourself and you need to stop. Study after study shows that it has almost purely negative effects on you physically, mentally, and socially, not to mention the time you're wasting. Aside from that, porn consumption increases the overall demand for sex work as a whole. And some of you are thinking, not me, I only watch adults with other consenting adults. First of all, you don't even know that. Second, you are contributing to the general economy that involves a lot of icky and illegal things that I can't even tell you about if I want this video to survive. Most importantly, and this is just a personal theory that I have, the reason that kid stuff and trafficking in general is on the rise is because we are awash in porn. And after a while, it's not enough. The yearly reports released by The Hub show that the most common searches are getting more and more taboo as the years go on. Like any drug, porn wears you down and you either need more or weirder stuff to get the same high. I believe very few people just wake up and are attracted to children. They are exposed to worse and worse things and after a while they need that to get high. Then one day, even the videos aren't enough and they find themselves on a plane to another country or something. So if this movie moved you and you feel like you wanna do something about it, you have a lot of options to get involved personally. Have you seen Sound of Freedom? Have you read some of the insane takes about this movie? Let me know what your thoughts are. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.